Well, happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to another Solid Academy live stream. Glad you're all with us today. Uh, we're talking about the new WordPress 6.7 that just dropped yesterday. We're joined by Timothy Jacobs, the lead developer of Solid WP. My name is Nathan Ingram. I'm the host here at Solid Academy. Glad you're all joining us as well. Timothy, how are things going for you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Nathan? Hanging in. Uh, we've been checking in with folks in the pre-show about who has upgraded to 6.7 did anything explode or not? And so far, so good. Uh, how about you? Any awesome. any issues upgrading? No issues yet. I have just uh, just have the one site that I updated so far, um, but I'll, I'll be making my way through a couple of them. Um, yeah, I haven't been having uh, any issues, but you've heard of a couple of people having issues, right? Yeah, you know, it's this. There's been reports on social media, so they're all completely believable, right? Uh, but <laughs> 100% you know, as, as much as you can, you, 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 I, I, just regular people talking about this, but you know, the, the, the uh, upgrade process timing out. Uh, and you said you'd notice something about that in the, the nightly builds too. Yeah, things seem a little bit slower. We've had some like timeouts uh, happening on updates. I didn't have it when I updated my site over here that we're gonna be demoing. Uh, as you can see, it's on 6.7. But yeah, it seems like things are being a little bit slow. It's possible that there's just like, you know, a whole bunch of people updating right away. You know, as more and more sites turn on auto updates, I guess the load on the servers could be going up and up and up. So, you know, if you are having an issue, maybe check in a little bit. I probably wouldn't go so far as to like do the update manually yourself. It's such a pain these days where you're so used to being able to just click a button, you know, having to FTP all the WordPress files up yourself. It's too much work. Um, that doesn't yeah, sound if you like do fun. experience that issue no i don't think so either you know I, I maybe try giving it a couple of days something like that yeah things seem to be a little bit more rocky than normal yeah so a lot of the uh changes here in wordpress 6.7 are side editor related uh, we do have a new default theme tell us what we're mm -hmm. going to be talking about over the next uh, few minutes here yeah so we're going to take a look at 2025 uh, it is the latest entry in the 2020 or i guess in the 20s series. I don't know how you say that to include 2010s and 2020s. It's the latest it is theme number 15, 16. If we start with 2010 and you get to 25, that is 15. This is our 15th uh, theme in the 20 uh, series. Um, I'm it looks pretty now. interesting. I know. Yeah. I made mean, that very, very, very complicated. <laughs> We've had a lot of these, um, but this is the latest iteration. So we'll take a look at that. That's probably where I'll spend a fair amount of time. There's a whole bunch of patterns, things like that. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, new data views improvements. Uh, we're going to then take a peek in the site editor, and then we'll take a look at some blocks. But honestly, there's not a whole bunch to demo uh, today. So folks, if you have uh, general WordPress questions, block editor questions, security questions, backups questions, questions on basically anything WordPress related, uh, we might have more time for that than we usually do. So yeah. we'll see. It is a lighter release as far as practical features uh, as some of the other recent ones. And I mean, quite frankly, it's November coming up towards the holidays. <laughs> I'm kind of happy for a light release. You're not looking for everything to change uh, minutes before uh, the holidays happen? Please no. You know, I, I, I'll never forget when we dropped the block editor, what was it, the, a couple of days before Thanksgiving in the States when it was originally dropped? Oh, and 5.0. Yeah. yeah. It was around there, wasn't it? It was like right around the holidays. It really was. It was not, I don't know. I, I sure didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Timothy, I'm going to disappear and let you get into 6.7. Folks, as usual, if you uh, have a question, please use the Zoom Q&A. Just keep that open throughout. And if somebody else asks a question that you also have, click the thumbs up icon to upvote that. We'll take those questions in the order of upvotes whenever Timothy finishes the demo. Let's get started. Awesome. So yeah, we're going to be taking a look at WordPress 6.7. And the biggest thing really in this release is 2025. So we're going to dive on in. Um, we have the new theme. I've activated it on this site here. I'd say, you know, I'm not a designer. Uh, whoops, let me go back. I'm not a designer, but I would say it's a kind of like simplistic kind of theme. There's not like super crazy design elements or things like that. But one of the things about it is that it comes with lots and lots of patterns that you can use to assemble things. Um, so we're going to take a look at some kind of cool new features that let you use patterns in a more friendly way um, in the site editor as well. But we do still have uh, things that we can do to customize. So we have our styles here that kind of respect patterns. So you can see these patterns are like style aware, I guess you could say. I'll say there is something that is confusing to me a bit, 
which is that we have these styles here and we have these palettes here. And when I change the palette, it kind of seems like it's almost identical to changing the style. You can see as I'm making changes up here, they're also being reflected down here. So I'm not entirely sure what the difference here is at this point. We showed this palettes feature off, I think last release in 6.6. .6. And at that time, there was, they were a little bit different from styles. Like we had some themes that had like one or two styles and then a whole bunch of palettes. But here it seems like in 2025, they're very closely linked to each other. And to be honest, I haven't really figured out why or 100% what the difference is. Um, we also have a bunch of typography options using the font library support that was added a few releases back. So we can you know find something that looks nice to us. To be honest, I really like the uh, default palette um, and kind of like the default setup here, but maybe we'll choose a custom font on top of this. Uh, that one seems kind of interesting. And so yeah, we can go ahead and save that. And so yeah, I wanted to show uh, some cool new features as well that you can see. So this is my home page. I built it just by using one of those page patterns. One of the things that's really cool is if you want to kind of assemble a whole bunch of patterns together, we get this new feature called the zoomed out mode. And so that's toggleable by this little button up here. It enters automatically when you go into like a pattern editor, a place, a context where you'd be adding patterns into your page. And when you're in this UI, things are very restricted. It's all about kind of like looking at your site's style and design as a whole from a zoomed out perspective, so to speak. So you can see even, for instance, the controls that are available here in the sidebar are not the full list of controls. They're quite minimal. And they let me do things like positioning and changing the different styles. So we can change it over to that cool lilac color, I guess. And this also extends nicely if I want to insert another pattern. So let's say I wanted to find a call to action that I want to put onto this page. We've got this sign up to get daily stories here, which you can see I'm already using. But maybe let's add a you know RSVP or maybe a what are you looking for thing here. So you can see now, when I scroll, it kind of provides spaces for me where I can drop these patterns. So if I wanted to drop it, say right all the way up and above, I could go ahead and do that. I can then get into this shuffle mode where it's gonna cycle through the different patterns in the same category. Subscribe to get unlimited access. We could put this here. We, we've got a little bit of weird of a homepage going on. But this is the zoomed out mode. Now it's also available in the block editor. It's only available in the block editor if you have something that's called iframing available. This has been something that the Gutenberg team has been working on uh, for a long time at this point. One of the big changes in 6.7 is that uh, previously, you know those meta boxes at the bottom of your content area, there's some plugins that haven't moved things over into the Gutenberg way. That was a previous bit of code that prevented the editor from going into iframe mode, now it doesn't. And so that means more often now you'll be able to use the iframe mode and this zoomed out feature. We'll take a little peek at it when we get over uh, to some of the more block related features, the things that aren't related to the site editor. But that is a thing to watch out for is that you won't see that feature if you're using any old blocks, blocks that haven't been updated. Um, they uh, also prevent the editor from entering into iframe mode, at least for now. So. If you're not seeing that feature, that might be why. But yeah, these are uh, those color palettes and those page patterns. And I think that's kind of what makes 2025, from what I can tell, is that it comes with so many different patterns, collections of media, lots of really great options to build you know, new pages, things in your website that match a cohesive style. But I, it, to me, at least, it doesn't feel like super you know, opinionated or anything like that. Another of the big features uh, that we've been working on uh, for many year years, I guess more than a year, I think at this point um, that we've been seeing in the site editor is data views. And so data views are what power this feature over here. So we can access the pages on my site through this UI and I can go ahead and click contact and it will show me the contact page, my about page, the privacy policy page. And you'll see here, it includes things that are not just published, but draft. What's new is this list of kind of like predefined filters. So I can say, hey, only show me published ones, only show me drafts or show me all of them. 
but this is also really customizable. So I can add a filter. Let's say I wanted to only find pages by me. Well, I could do that. If I wanted to find the ones from Timothy who hasn't created any pages on this site, you'd see that nothing is found. And you can see the filters get added up here. A cool little uh, helpful bit here is that I can now hide these filters. So previously these filters would always display and we kind of stack up. But if I don't want to show those filters, I can just say, hey, hide the filter display and they'll get out of the way for me. I'm going to go ahead and remove that filter. And I can show you now some more flexibility. So we have this list view, but we also have a table view and we have a grid view. And both of these have gotten more customizable as well. So you can see this is showing some preview images here. If I wanted to show more of those previews, I can now customize the preview size. So if I want to really see those big old images, I absolutely can do that. I can change sorting options here. If I want to sort by different things, let's say I want to make it alphabetical, I can go ahead and do that and maybe make that sort ascending. So about is the first one. We can also hide and show columns. So let's say the date was very important to me. Well, I could go ahead and do that. Or let's say I don't really care about the author, well, that I can go ahead and hide that. If I'm in the table view, I also have the ability to rearrange columns. So I can click on the status column and then easily move it left. And if I want to from here, I can also say, let's filter on the status and let's only find the published posts. And all of these things are updating for me. Lastly, there's been, well, I think this might be lastly, but uh, there's been lots of changes. <laughs> the last one I'm gonna talk about is the changes to bulk actions. So previously these were kind of like up above, they kind of floated around, but now they've been kind of like, I think tightened and neatened up, I guess you could say. And they'll now be uh, showing in my selection state always at the bottom of the page. And this is where I can go ahead and take action. So if I wanna move all these to the trash, I could. It's gonna ask me first, I'm not going to. And if I wanna exit out of that selection, I can. Now, right now, this is kind of just in the site editor. So it's not just in pages, it's also in templates. This is using data views as well as patterns. But one of the big things here is that these data views are kind of the future of the WordPress list table. So, you know, we have these things in WP admin. I go into the post table and this is like, you know, our list table. And so what the WordPress team have been working on is expanding data views to have extensibility, to have all the features that you'd want here. Because as the project slowly moves to kind of take more of WP admin and move it into this more refined new UI, data views are going to be the center of it. So a lot of work uh, this release went into data views. It's one of the big items on my list here. For now, it's just, you know, in the editor, but it is something that is going to be coming basically to everywhere in WordPress soon. So it is important to keep an eye on, you know, get feedback in. Uh, that rewrite and republish is not a core feature that's coming from a plugin that I have uh, installed, uh, duplicate posts. Um, interestingly, um, we don't have a lot, so let's go on tangents. Uh, interestingly, uh, the site editor actions, like one of the things, for instance, that was proposed is that, hey, if I want to go find this contact page, I should be able to uh, add my own action here. And so then a plugin like the uh, publish, uh, republishing post and doing that kind of stuff could add their action into this menu using a cool API. Um, not available stabilized yet, but it's available in the Gutenberg plugin if you want to try it out. Um, so if you, you know, have some plugins or have some things that you want to like have for your clients that are like, oh, they want to do this action or that option, they can, you know, go ahead and uh, do that through this new UI coming soon. That is data views. Uh, we're going to head back into the site editor for a little bit. We're going to take a look at global styles. One thing that we've got in here that is new is font support. So I'm going to scroll into, where do I need to scroll into? Uh, typography, there we go. And we have font size presets. And previously these were things that were defined by your theme and you couldn't really change them, but now we can. So if we go ahead, I'm going to enter into this style book so we can kind of see some of these different things here. And if I want to, I can now change uh, some of these items. So I can say, hey, let's uh, change the sizing. Now, one of the things that's big here is fluid typography. 
This is something that was introduced a while ago in the site editor that lets your font sizes change size. So let's say you want to have a nice, big, impactful font on desktop. It's like 80 pixels or, you know, 20 rems or something crazy, right? But on mobile, that would be totally unusable. It would take up so much of the page, it would be awful. What fluid typography lets you kind of do is say, hey, scale the font size based off of the browser's width. And previously, this was something that you couldn't do through the editor itself. <clears throat> you would have to have your theme enable it or go into theme.json, those types of things. But now uh, you can. So we can say if we wanted to change the minimum size, we could go ahead and do that. If we wanted to change the maximum size, we could do that. And you can see that this large font is one that is being used uh, by the H3 here. Let me go ahead and undo those pages or those changes, excuse me. Oops. undo history, it's pretty cool. The other thing we can do now is also add some of our own. So if we wanted to say, you know, let's make something that is massive and we can even give it a label. So we can say this like super duper huge. We can hit save, save that extra typography option. And now if we went on into a bit of content, we could say, let's change this, tell your story, go into here, go to the font sizes and super duper huge. And now it's massive. Maybe super duper huge is super duper too huge, but you now have these choices. Uh, previously, these were things that you could only really do by editing theme.json um, or you know having a theme that defines it for you. So I think it's cool that these are options that are now available to you in the UI. So we're gonna take a look now at some of the block changes. One of the ones that I wanna call your attention to is uh, the design tools per block page. Um, this is, uh, oh, interesting. <laughs> so one of the fun, Again, tangents, because we're, we're about to wrap up. Um, tangents, uh, you can see why some of those like duplicate post uh, plugins are important because you can see this post here, roster design tools per block, WordPress 6.7 edition. But this was made by clearly duplicating the post. And so the slug was set to WordPress 6-6 edition and WordPress just helpfully added dash two to you, uh, which isn't what you want, but those, you know, rename and repost plugins kind of, Make sure that you're doing all of the SEO correct things when you're making a post from another post and duplicating it. So that's why those plugins are useful. It's kind of like an SEO thing. That's why I think Yoast acquired it some time ago, um, but helpful one. And I think it's pre-installed on Nexus sites, which is why it's in my demo site here. But that tangent being said, the reason why we're calling our attention to it is because we have expanded access now to more of these design tools. So uh, I think a big one was border support was added to a whole bunch of blocks that didn't previously have it, padding as well. So this is like a kind of helpful chart that shows you like all the different like visual things that you can do with a block and what core blocks support them now. And uh, the Gutenberg team has been working to add as many as possible to the blocks where it makes sense. So you're never like, well, I have it in this one place, but not this one place, why is that? In WordPress 6.7, that should be even less of an issue, uh, thanks to the work of the Gutenberg team. A couple of other things that I want to draw attention to, and this one is kind of along those lines, which is uh, background images. So previously, background images were kind of really only available in group blocks, and I think a couple of others. But now we have these available in uh, some more blocks, in the quote block, the verse block, and the actual post content block itself. So if I wanted to, let's say, insert some Hello Dolly lyrics, which I have on my clipboard here somewhere. Doop, 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 doop. Here we go. Previously, if I wanted to have a background image behind these, I'd have to like put it in a group block. But now this is just helpfully in this little background image area. So I'm gonna open my media library, select a kind of uh, pattern that I like, and the actual background uh, image tools have also been moved around and I'm not finding the ones that I'm looking for. There we go. So previously they would kind of show in this really big 
panel where like each thing, basically all of these controls would be in the panel itself. But now they kind of pop out, which makes the sidebar a little bit easier to use. You know, as you get more and more things in the sidebar that are customized or maybe not customized and you just have to scroll past, it makes using it harder. So they've kind of moved these tools out here. The thing that I want for this is this is a background that's meant to be tiled. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. And then we could also go ahead and enable padding and give it a little bit of spacing. And there we go. We've got our text with a background pattern. That's maybe not the easiest to read thing, but maybe actually if we like align it right, it'll uh, make it a little bit easier. I don't know. I'm not a designer. I'm just showing you the tools, but this is now you know a new option where previously you'd have to do like multiple layers of nesting to get the effect, but now it's just kind of all built in and available for you. That said, group blocks are still pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a group block and put in a couple of blocks here. We'll say uh, maybe some of that text and maybe an image. Let's actually get it from OpenVerse. And so you can see here's an example of using that zoom out mode in the uh, editor. I'm going to search for Louis. See if we get a cool image. Um, and there we go. Let's add that one in. So that site is that image has now been added into my site. I'm going to go ahead and put it into my stack block here. And the reason for that is all to show off that uh, these now have box shadow support. So I can go ahead and enable the shadow option, scroll down here and add a shadow to that full block. Previously, this was something that wasn't available within the actual group block, um, but now it is. So we could you know, add some more padding here, which might make that look a little bit nicer. Uh, some padding on the top. There you go. So just more, you know, design tools that are being brought into uh, the post editor. And the last one on my list is list item colors. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a list and we'll have item number one and item number two. We can now have the kind of full uh, style controls that are available on the actual list itself but they can be customized for a list item. So if I wanna set the text color here to something unreadable, I can. Um, I can also enable background and maybe make it a little bit more readable, though very bright. And you can see that you know Gutenberg is making those changes for me and just you know expanding the design tools that are available. Uh, believe it or not, that is uh, just about it. Um, I guess we could show another cool thing because, you know, we've got plenty of time, but, you know, if you have questions, you can start throwing them in the Q&A section, um, is adding new pages from here. So if I wanted to say uh, RSVP uh, fundraising event, I can go ahead and create that page. And uh, we now have this, uh, we've had this before, this kind of like full page pattern uh, takeover thing, but I think it is now really effective uh, with all of the patterns from 2025, which is pretty cool. Looks like there isn't a good one for an event. Oh, here it is, event RSVP, a landing page for a podcast. Uh, let's go ahead and, I don't know, do this one. Um, and as you can see, it's there, it's customizable. I think there was some negative feedback from some folks about this experience uh, being not what you want. So there is a new uh, preference. Uh, if you go into here, oh, is it maybe not in the site editor? Uh, yeah, let's look for the preference in the actual page editor. Fundraising event, preferences. Yeah, uh, show starter patterns when creating a new page. So if that's something where like, you know, you're always starting from scratch, you don't want to see those patterns uh, unless you actually enter into that mode, you can turn off that new preference. I'll keep it enabled though, because I think it's a handy dandy one. Um, but yeah, this is kind of most of the 6.7 things. Um, there is one that is touched on in the actual uh, about page, which is kind of more of a developer -y feature and it's not super available yet, but is uh, block bindings. 
Um, so this is more work is continuing. This will be a cool feature at some point, which lets you kind of take content from elsewhere and put it into a block dynamically. Uh, this is kind of like a feature that Cadence has had for a very long time, but is coming into WordPress core slowly. Right now it's really only available in a couple of blocks. It isn't very as flexible as it needs to be, but there are some cool uh, changes being made there. Um, the performance team has continued to make uh, performance improvements as they do in each version of WordPress. There's some around lazy loading images and automatic sizing, some actual code optimization, things like that. And then a whole bunch of accessibility improvements have been made as well. Um, if you head on over to this page, you'll see kind of the uh, WordPress 6.7 landing page. This is something new they've been doing uh, fairly recently. And then you can also check out the release notes and the field guide. If you're a developer, I would highly recommend checking these things out. But with that, that is my uh, pre-planned demo done. So we can get into some questions. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Timothy. Uh, this is uh, 6.7 is definitely a site editor heavy release. Uh, I know many of you are using the cadence theme and not a block theme. Uh, and so for users of cadence, what would we notice going to 6.7? So one of the, you'll have a couple of things. Uh, you will, so uh, my understanding from Ben is that cadence does support the zoomed out mode uh, in the actual page editor. I'm in a post editor. Uh, but the thing to be aware of is that if you are using custom blocks or third-party blocks beyond the cadence ones, some of those uh, aren't yet, haven't been updated to API version three, which is what it's called. So you might not see it, but uh, yeah, this should open here. So we could actually, if we go to, why not? I've got cadence installed in here. I don't think it's very set up, but theoretically we should see that if I go to a post, I wanted to go to a page, didn't I? About patterns. Yeah, so <laughs> this is very minimal. The cadence theme with zero configuration done to it. But this is a feature that is supported um, by Cadence. Cadence has all of their blocks are doing the, the things that they need to do. But you know, if you have third-party blocks that haven't been updated in a while, you might not see that feature. I really do you like the ability to drag over and drop in right there in the visual. Yeah, I think this is really helpful, like particularly with patterns. I'm gonna switch back to uh, 2025 to kind of show those patterns. I think that's where things really come together. Um, so like if, I think the idea from the Gutenberg team of how they pe see people using this feature is, you know, going into pages, clicking add new page, saying, you know, uh, whatever we want. able to start with one of these big patterns if you want to, but then also being able to just start inserting uh, different things and building it up from, you know, scratch. Oop. There we go. And then, you know, here's another cool one. Yeah, I like so, that yeah, a lot. I think it's a really, really nice feature. And I really like how they minimize the sidebar over here to just kind of focus on the big picture stylistic changes. Um, this is like a thing they've also been doing with different types of blocks for locking and things like that. I think these kind of like customization points are really nice. So yeah, this yeah. is a feature available to you if you're using Cadence. You'll also uh, get some of those more design tools if you're using core blocks, but you know, I, most of these things have been supported in Cadence blocks for a long time. Um, and then yeah, you know, data views is a thing to keep an eye on. It's not something available to you if you're not using the site editor yet, but it is the future. So, you know, a lot well, of work in, being done there. In this phase of Project Gutenberg, they're talking about, or suppose, as I understand it, it's supposedly the admin uh, mm. interface is supposed to be remade. And these data views are the foundation of that, right? We'll see this across exactly. the WP admin eventually. Exactly. This is like really one of the core big bits because, you know, so much of WordPress happens in these list tables. And so, yeah, I don't know what the exact migration strategy is, if you go to make.wordpress.org slash design, you can kind of find some updates as the team has been working on, you know, improving and making changes and talking about how they see the future of WP admin. But yeah, this is going to be a very critical component of it. One of the things that I'm excited about, we all know if you're a developer and have tried to modify those list table pages, that it is possible, but horrendous. Not for the um, faint of heart. 
It is absolutely not. Uh, even more so, I had a client ask me the other day of like, hey, can we add something to that quick edit? I was like, well, you can, but whoo, boy, is it not fun to do. Um, and I was like, uh, he's a developer. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if you really want to go down that route. But what's so cool about data views is they're going to have these built in. So, you know, this extensibility is really what the team has been thinking about finding ways to extend, but also be thoughtful about how you extend. One of the things that I find that can be really exciting about this is that we all have the problem with WP admin being cluttered by plugins, putting things all over the places. But as the UI gets rebuilt in React, I think the Gutenberg team is being far more intentional about where plugins can put things. You can't just put things arbitrarily in a React page. It just doesn't really work like that. So the team has to come up with, hey, here are APIs where you can extend it and make a really great extending a full experience, but hopefully also not a cluttered experience where you have 25 flashing things all over the place. So <laughs> I think this is very exciting um, to see. It's just, you know, right now it's still uh, early days, so to speak, but we're a lot farther in this release than we were, you know, six months ago. Yeah, indeed. Uh, some questions about fluid typography. Um, do you have any idea if fluid typography is going to be supported in Cadence natively? Uh, that'd be a great question, probably for the Cadence team specifically. I think, yeah. so this is one of these cases where Cadence has had a feature for longer. And so this fluid typography thing is like much more centered around theme.json and things like that. Um, I don't know if Ben has updated like their the Cadence post about how the future of Cadence and how it interacts with theme.json and block themes. I think a hybrid theme is still the pattern, the idea. So at some point, it wouldn't surprise me if these things start migrating to the core bits of UI, but it's a lot of work, a big undertaking because Cadence has had these features, you know, for years. But Indeed. so this is much more of a, you know, block editor theme.json feature, or excuse me, site editor theme.json feature. You don't strictly need it to use the site editor, but you do need theme.json, I believe. Got it. Uh, let's see. Sue would like to know if there are any 6.7 features that are available for sites built on themes like, can't, well, I, I'm sorry, that was the question we just answered. So basically, if you're, if you're running a standard theme, not a block theme, most of these changes are under the hood. Aren't oh, yeah. If you're not you. even using a block theme, I think you've got uh, very few things. If you're using a, uh, a block theme like Cadence, then you'll get the zoomed out mode, some of the new blocks, things like that. If you're uh, looking for a site editor uh, theme, that's where you're going to get all the site editor changes. But yeah. Uh, here, here's the question I thought I was just reading from Sue. Are the 2025 patterns that you showed, are those also available in the .org repository for patterns? Let's find out. Um, doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, because I think these are not so much change and these are organized by newest. So yeah, I think they are all built to the theme. That being said, you know, it was released yesterday. So it wouldn't surprise me <laughs> if they, you know, take a peek at some of those patterns and move them in here. Um, also patterns are, you know, always copyable. So if you go into 2025, go to pattern and find one that you like, you can, uh, go into this thing. Why am I not able to go into this thing? Have they removed that as a feature? That would be annoying. You'll just have to do an extra step. Um, hmm. well, okay. So we'll have to do the extra step. If we duplicate that pattern. I'm not sure I like this UX. I feel like it should take me to that duplicated pattern. But I'll go over to it, hit this one. Now we're going to go into the editor. And if we go into the code editor, we can just copy this whole thing. And this is the pattern, right? So, you know, you can copy those things and move them around. You can even kind of like do it visually if you select the root block and hit copy. This is something that you can insert into any theme. So I bet Kluji, <laughs> particularly because there's, I'm not for some reason able to copy it from here, which I feel like would be a nice feature to have. Um, but yeah, they might come to 2020 uh, to WordPress.org. Um, some of the previous ones did, I think 2024, uh, a number of those patterns, if not all of them are available on the patterns directory. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, ben would like to know if there's anything, if you heard anything new about uh, work on translations, has the performance stuff been implemented yet? I believe PHP translations have landed. Um, so this is a new translation format 
um, where uh, you might have seen these PO files and MO files and POT files and all those kinds of things. And those files are things that WordPress parses to find the translated versions of strings. But that parsing is kind of slow. It's been a known performance bottleneck for a, a long time on WordPress sites. Um, there was some talk, I think, about whether, and I think WordPress does support what's called the get text extension, which basically takes that parsing and does it from something that WordPress has to do itself, but that then PHP can do, and it'll be much faster. But some very smart contributors on the WordPress uh, core team thought, hey, there's another way that we can make this faster, which is to just define the strings in a gigantic PHP file. Parsing PHP files is very, very fast. In fact, on basically any modern PHP these days, it gets cached by something called opcache, which makes it even faster, which basically says your server only needs to translate the 10,000 strings in WooCommerce or whatever. It only needs to load those into memory once. And so, yeah, I do believe that uh, those PHP translations are now supported by WordPress core. I'm not 100% sure if Glotpress uh, has been updated. Um, we could probably find out um, if we go to wordpress.org, not patterns. If we go to, is there not a make link from here? Oh, community. And let's see, polyglots. Let's see if someone has said anything about PHP translations. But yeah, this will make it possible for uh, folks to provide uh, those uh, translations in a PHP file, which will be uh, quite a bit faster. And it might not be in the polyglots theme. Let's look at the core team. Mm, my search foo is not uh, doing well. Yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, language packs uh, from wordpress.org uh, do support these. So yeah, we've had this uh, for a little bit now. Um, but yeah, it is a helpful feature. Indeed. Uh, folks, that was our last question. If you have a question to ask Timothy, drop it in the Q&A. In the meantime, I have one, uh, which is yeah. earlier when you chose the unviewable yellow color on white, uh, is there anything planned that you're aware of that would flag, hey, this is not an accessible color combo over so, there in the color yes, picker? It does exist. I just find it a little bit buggy sometimes, um, but it should be doing that automatically. So I'm going to go ahead back into that page. This is our about page and go into this text here. I'll change this background to white. Yeah, you see, it is. There's supposed to be a message here. Um, let's see if we can figure out a way to make it appear. I thought uh, at one point I saw that. That's what I was. That's what, what I, I mean by it. it's kind of flaky. It just doesn't seem to work all the time. Let's try it here. Change this text color. To... Yeah, I mean, this is definitely <laughs> white on white. I would not call readable. Probably not um, accessible. Yeah, uh, not a great experience. Um, so yeah, there is a thing. I think if you go back and watch the replay, there will be a time when it appeared here. To be honest, I do not know why it isn't anymore, but this is something that I think I've noticed over the past couple of releases that it has gotten more flaky. Oftentimes I found it doing the opposite thing. So I guess this is new where it would say that something wasn't accessible because it didn't like understand that it was contained within a group block that had like a background on it or something like that. And so it didn't like fully look up the stack. Um, at least that's what was my impression. I don't know if that's actually what the issue was, but yeah, this is a fun one where it says, uh, you know, Oh, there's oh, a good question go. from Ben. It oh, appeared. So there it this is. color combination may be hard for people to read. Try using a brighter background color and or a darker text color. I don't know why that, you know. But you see now it's black and this is perfectly readable. Bugs. Odd. Very, very odd. Uh, ben has a question here, and I've experienced this myself. Um, so sometimes when you're on a page uh, or post in the editor um, and you go out of it, 
it will say something might not be saved or it's, it's an error similar to that when it actually has been saved. You know what causes so my that? My bet would be that this is related to iframing. So my editor here uh, has no iframes in it because it doesn't have any of those classic legacy meta boxes. So one way that you can test this, if you go into preferences, there, it might not, yeah. So custom fields is a way that we can uh, force this iframe stuff, I think, to appear. Yeah, I believe this still uses iframing. Um, we can find out really quick, you know, as we're doing these dives. Or did they rewrite this to not use iframes? They might have re rewritten this to not use iframes at some point. Oh, or maybe it's the opposite. Uh, Let's, you know, do some more finding out. Yeah, so I think this is taking us out of iframe mode. And that's one side effect. The other side effect, well, that, that also doesn't make sense. Hmm. Custom fields is also a weird one. So we, we might come back to it. So just but, backing up for a minute, if we see yeah. those classic meta box drop downs at the bottom, it yeah. on those what types of pages, it pulls in an iframe. What's happening there? It prevents the, it kind of prevents the iframing, but kind of, it actually like pulls the HTML from WPM and slash post.php and shoves it in here. Why that's important is because it turns saving. This is a geeky question, so you're going to get a geeky answer. I apologize. It turns saving into a two-step process. First, it saves what's in the actual block editor here. Second, it triggers a save for those legacy meta boxes that are using oh. the old hooks and the old all that kind of stuff. And so what can happen is that like, I think the dirty detection on those kind of legacy bits of content here at the bottom doesn't work as well because it's kind of flaky in its whole concept. Whereas with Gutenberg, it knows exactly when a change has been made and it knows if there's anything to save. So what you'll often see, I believe this is still the case. I've kind of banished a lot of the plugins that have legacy meta boxes from my sites at this point. But I believe what you'll even see happen is that the save button will not disable. So if you make changes here or whatever and hit save, if you have the legacy meta boxes in place, and yeah, we're seeing this here, is that it doesn't know so much whether or not changes have been made here or not. So it kind of always presents the save button. And so I think you then run into this weird conflict with, yeah, the, with the legacy meta boxes, stuff like that. If you have plugins that are still using legacy like, boxes at this point, file a support ticket. It's been <laughs> what six years of Gutenberg. It, it's too long, um, but yeah, it causes those issues. It prevents the iframing of the editor. That might change in the future. One of the reasons it prevents the iframing of the editor is because, like, I think there are also some plugins that expect to be able to do things into the editor content, and conflicts with styles, and it, it's awful. Um, so yeah, if you've got plugins that are still doing those things there, file a support tag and say, Hey, when are you going to natively support Gutenberg? Because it makes the editor experience much better. Um, and it's been too long. Hmm. There's my soapbox. You've got me on. To, uh, <laughs> got you wound up here. Uh, but yeah, I, well, my, that would be my guess then. That's interesting. And, and those legacy meta box, they're a Yoast SEO still publishes out I think those. They still do, and they do. <laughs> I think it's it's about time, folks. And it's interesting because they also support. I mean, we could install uh, Yoast SEO uh, because they still they have Gutenberg integrations on some things. They just haven't done it for everything, um, and it makes it uh, you know it may, it forces the editor into a bad place. Oh, it's not WordPress SEO. Is it Yoast SEO? Um, but yeah, so maybe that'll be a better example of where we can show this. And so I think it's possible to do things in a quote, more correct quote way so that it is less buggy with things like saving, but that would be my guest. Uh, let's just head on over into the editor. Yeah, let's go into here's my new post. We'll turn off that uh, custom fields thing because that's whew, awful. Oh, but yeah, so here you go. This is, uh, I think, where how it kind of like pulls them these things in. So it's detecting like the meta box title that gets registered and shows them over here and you can like force some of them to hide. So that could be a way that you debug it, uh, Ben, is to like try checking those things on and off. Um, but yeah, so I think this is a thing that's new. Is that, well, so I saw a picture of this, um, but I'm not sure I can get it. But 
yeah, when you're when you enter this mode, you can see here that this save button is uh, always here. Um, and so that you see you saw that spinner there, right? So that spinner is what was shown when this meta box gets saved. So saving the thing, that save is happening. That's Gutenberg done. And then this part, it started spinning. So if we put in a thing here and mm. do this. Yeah, Very this interesting. Thing. So you see, it, it complicates things all over the place. It, it, it's uh, why this isn't all available and things like here, I don't know. It, it, not my product. It's one of the um, most popular plugins of WordPress. Yeah, it's yes, crazy. And I think it is a frustrating, th this isn't me because I'm not the one building these features, but I think it is a little bit of a frustration of the Gutenberg team that this plugin <laughs> with millions and millions of installs is kind of preventing the iframing of the editor for loads of folks. Um, hmm. But there is, let me see if we can find that uh, uh, image. Yeah, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to throw them in security. Yeah, there's one question in the chat from Karen, and it's another odd one that my interesting little rabbit trail here. She says she set the same template for the homepage as the one you chose, and it mm -hmm. looks just like it should on the back end, but when she goes to the front end, uh, everything is missing. Everything is missing? Uh-oh. Uh, um, I have an idea of what we could take a look at. So yeah, it seems is... to be showing an old home page that she deleted from the track. Oh, Karen, make sure that that correct page is set as your home page in the settings and reading. Exactly. That would have been my bet as well. Oh, it is. It is. Well, then, whoo, caching? Did you try turning it off and turning it back on again? <laughs> exactly. Um, it's not caching. We asked that originally. I'm sorry, Karen. I was being sarcastic. It's a weird problem. Um. I found that shaking my computer really hard doesn't solve these things either. Uh, Not anymore, you know. It used to because then you just accidentally power cycle it because, you know, the CPU <laughs> would, you know, uh, get unhooked. Uh, um, that's interesting. Karen, I don't know what would cause that. Are you behind Cloudflare? It's a demo site. Uh, it, it feels like caching to me that would cause an issue like that. Yeah. But if there's no caching, that's weird. Yeah, if this isn't set up to do that, I mean, it's also possible. So let me actually go to this. Um, uh, Karen, I'm seeing the stories pattern on that page that you just, it may be browser caching. Have you tried it on a different browser? Yeah. You know, I understand, Timothy, the value of browser caching, but sometimes I hate it with a red hot passion. <laughs> yeah, it is a double pay, double uh, thing, Bob. Um, double edged, useful sword. Yes. Uh, and Jeffrey's what I was correct. Mention... Go ahead. Oh, no, no, you go. Uh, I was just going to say, you can always deal with browser caching by putting slash question mark something after it to create your own fake query string like jeffrey suggested question no cache equals one it can be anything equals whatever just to add a query string there because usually that will break out of the cache oh it's still showing on a new browser thank you um well what i was going to mention this other thing is make sure you're inserting your content into the correct place so this probably isn't your issue but it's a thing that you know, you can make a mistake from, right? So all of this content that you have here of this pattern is in this content block. And so ah. what that means, if I were to go to, let, let me go to the actual, uh, no, I'm gonna go back. So if we go to our actual homepage in uh, a regular page editor, you'll see that all my content is here. And then it has this weird like homepage thing because this is in the page editor, isn't totally understand but you see this is where all of my content is it's possible to make a mistake which you don't want to do which is if we go ahead and edit this home page within gutenberg that you accidentally drop all of this content outside of the content block and whoop i don't know what happened in the list view there ran into another bug it looks like uh all my content disappeared from the list of <laughs> still on the site. Um, but yeah, you can end up in a spot where your content isn't actually in the right place. Um, yeah, let's see what actually happens here. 
<laughs> we're breaking things nathan um i think now it knows it knows that something got messed up yeah so my content is now actually empty and so that's why it showed that thing there and Ooh. if we go to this actual page i imagine it still works yeah because it's actually in the html but you know depending on what's going on you could get weird things here and so you can see now we have no content so if we inserted our home page again um uh, which one was it uh business homepage and hit save we should now see it twice um so uh, i just make sure that your content actually got put into content i have no idea how to fix this because those box aren't showing up uh, so yeah she says it's there tom says he's hanging with cadence for a while yeah, yeah, there's some bugs. And maybe um, yeah, that's that's oops, so strange. This is all gone. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't know what's going on. With your side. Yeah, it, it, caching. I mean, it could be caching that you're. I mean, it's not this, but it, like theoretically, caching can happen at multiple levels. So it could be something that your uh, hosting company uh, is. Uh, by hosting company, I don't mean your website hosting company. I mean like your internet service provider. Um, like they theoretically could be caching things. Um, you know, uh, your router could have some caching built in. Um, is the site it's HTTPS so or HTTP? It's HTTPS. It's a demo site. the The link mm. is there and way back up in the chat. But oh, yeah, chat? it's it's a very very strange. Um, very strange thing. Uh, so, Karen, this might be fun to deal with in office hours tomorrow. I've never seen it happen either. That's that's really odd. There's Object Cache Pro on, but an Object Cache shouldn't really have an effect here. I mean, you could try clearing yeah. the Object Cache. Like, if something got out of sync with the Object Cache when WordPress loads the post, it could be wrong. Yeah. Karen, if you don't figure it out, uh, we can do look at it during office hours tomorrow, and you can uh, maybe if you give me access, I'll we can show the editor and see what we can figure out what's going on. It's odd, very very odd. Strange. All right, well, Timothy, this has been fun. Uh, we got to see what happens in WordPress six point seven, all the hour. changes, and we broke it, and we, yeah, it's been great. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, any final thoughts as we're wrapping up today? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is a smaller update. There is a new 2025, which is a whole into work and a cool thing. You know, it's fun to use the default themes. Um, you know, uh, there's definitely still some bugs. Uh, it's uh, like 10,000 open issues in GitHub. So, you know, um, there, there's a lot of <laughs> things to do. But I do think this is a cool preview of where things are going, as always, particularly with a site editor and data views. We're already, we're using data views actually in Solid Central. Um, we need to update our version to be the new version from WordPress core. But, you know, we're looking at adopting data views in our plugins as well. Um, so I think this is a really exciting uh, peek at uh, what WordPress will be like, I hope sooner than later, but it might take a while, we'll see. Yeah, indeed. All right, folks, a couple of things I'm going to drop in the chat once again. There were no slides today, all live demo. Timothy's going to be back on November the 25th, which is a couple of weeks away. It's the Monday of Thanksgiving week for an Ask Me Anything with David Johnson, the product owner of Solid WP, and they'll be there taking your questions about whatever you want to talk about related to security, WordPress, backups, all the things. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, also, we'll have the replay of this live stream up in about an hour. So thanks again for hanging out with us today, taking a look at WordPress 6.7. We'll see you back here next time on Solid Academy, where we go further together.